Radium is a naturally occurring element. It tends to turn up with surprising frequency in mining operations, in drilling operations. It's in the earth. So much so that in, in drilling towns in the United States, in places where there is a lot of deep drilling activity for oil or natural gas, at the local dump in some of those towns, they have now, in some places, installed these giant Geiger counters, radioactivity sensors on a large scale. So if you drive a truck full of drilling waste into the town dump and your truck is full of sludge and drill cuttings and in particular filters for fracking material, which do have a tendency to get really radioactive, thanks to Geiger counters like these ones at the McKenzie County Landfill in North Dakota, if you try to drive into the landfill to dump your radium contaminated radioactive drilling waste as if it is normal <coughs> trash, the town dump should start beeping like a smoke detector caught in a house fire. Should do. Doesn't always. Over the last decade, North Dakota has, of course, experienced a huge oil boom. North Dakota is the second largest oil producing state now after Texas. Uh, one of the byproducts of all that drilling is that every day in North Dakota, several dozen tons of these are produced now by the drilling industry. This kind of looks like a net, long net. It's a filter. They, they call it a filter sock, and it's used to filter the wastewater from fracking sites to capture the solids in the wastewater used in hydraulic fracking. Well, that wastewater includes high levels of salts, and metals and organic compounds and radioactive materials like radium, naturally occurring radium. And because the filters catch all that solid stuff, the filters themselves, when they're done being used, the filters themselves end up being radioactive. And because these things are radioactive, you need to take some care in throwing them away. No landfill in North Dakota is supposed to take any radioactive waste that clocks in at over five pico curies. These filter socks, though, these filter socks apparently clock in on average at anywhere between five picocuries and 80 picocuries per filter. A uh, shale reporter said last summer that in one case, one of them came in at 374 picocuries. So that's 75 times the radioactivity that any North Dakota landfill is supposed to be able to take. But the people who are drilling the living daylights out of North Dakota right now, they're producing dozens of tons of these filters every day. And there is nowhere to legally dispose of them anywhere in the state. If you get caught bringing one of these things into a North Dakota landfill, it's a $1,000 fine per filter. So what do you think is happening to them in North Dakota? This was found at an Indian reservation called Fort Berthold in North Dakota last year. Nobody knows who dumped them all there, but there they are. The tribe says they realized they had a problem when one of the trucks from the reservation that had just been picking up regular consumer trash at the dumpsters around the reservation tripped the Geiger counters at the McKenzie County landfill. They didn't know they had anything radioactive, but apparently somebody had been dumping these radioactive filters in the tribe's trash cans and the dumpsters and dumping them just on the side of the road at the reservation. It's radioactive waste full of radium, which can kill you, but eh, who wants to go to the trouble of taking care of it properly? And it's happening all over over the state now. Last month, look at this. These leaking trailers loaded with thousands of pounds of radioactive filters were found just parked outside near Watford City, North Dakota, leaking radioactive contamination. The company that operates trailers at that site had already been fined nearly $30,000 by the local county dump for trying to dump radioactive filters there before, but this new hall where they were just piling them up, that was the biggest radioactive illegal dump anyone had ever seen in the state. And it was really highly radioactive. Some of the filters that were dumped out there reportedly maxed out the meters, the Geiger counters. They could read as high as a thousand pico curies, and these things maxed out, maxed out the meters. They were hotter than that. This, on these trailers last month, this was the worst anyone had ever seen in North Dakota. Until now. Yesterday, at an abandoned gas station in the remote uh, Divide County, North Dakota town of Noonan, population 120, at a 4,000 square foot abandoned gas station on the edge of town, a place that looks like uh, this from the outside, turns out that on the inside of that facility, it was stuffed with hundreds of bags of industrial sized, they're industrial sized black garbage bags filled with highly radioactive filters. More than 200 bags of radioactive waste, these filters, in six rooms of this dirt floor abandoned property on the edge of town. The guy who owns the property is reportedly a fugitive. He escaped from law enforcement custody in Wyoming, where he was being held on a larceny charge recently. So maybe at his abandoned gas station property in Noonan, North Dakota, he's not the best landlord. But in his absence, the fact that North Dakota has
has no state plan for dealing with the tons of radioactive material they're letting the drilling industry produce every day, other than telling local cities and counties to charge people a thousand bucks a filter if they try to throw this stuff away. That genius system has now earned tiny noon in North Dakota and this site the distinction of being five times as radioactive as a site, as what humans are supposed to live with. The worst illegal radioactive dump the state has seen yet, but nobody's expecting that it's going to be the worst one forever. The mayor of Noonan, North Dakota, says she is furious, telling the Bismarck Tribune today, why isn't the state more on top of this? Why don't they have a more stringent plan for getting rid of this stuff? Good question, mayor of 120 person, Noonan, North Dakota. But in the meantime, one of the consequences of the drilling boom for North Dakota is literally radioactive toxic waste turning up on Indian reservations and in the abandoned gas stations of the state and in municipal trash cans, in commercial dumpsters used by unsuspecting businesses, and sometimes just dumped along the side of the road. Drill, baby, drill. I'll keep licking those paintbrushes. We will handle the radium issue later someday. Joining us now is Don Morrison. He's executive director of the Dakota Resource Council, a group of more than 700 conservation-minded landowners in North Dakota. Uh, Mr. Morrison, it's uh, nice to see you again despite the circumstances. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for having me, Rachel. Good to see you. Uh, how common are discoveries like this? Um, not necessarily just the filters specifically, but uh, stuff being disposed of improperly from the drilling industry that, um, that poses a threat to public health in your state. Well, it, they're becoming more common. We're finding out more and more all the time. And there's 75 tons of, of oil waste uh, generated in North Dakota every day. Uh, about a third of that is radioactive. And most of that is being dumped illegally in North Dakota. Um, why aren't uh, regulations and oversight, even of something as extreme as radioactive waste, why, why aren't regulations and overstate in the state keeping pace with the growth of that industry? Well, I think there's this, we have, to dr there, we have to drill as fast as possible. We have to get the oil out of the ground as fast as possible. And other things just take a back seat to that. And, um, it's, um, and that's one of the reasons that, that there is these kind of problems. In terms of how this And it's not just limited to the waste. Well, let me ask you about the broader picture, about um, both the waste and these, and these broader consequences. I mean, looking at those trailers full of radio, very hyper-radioactive uh, filters on that land in Mackenzie County, looking at this gas station that was discovered today, looking at that uh, Indian reservation here, reading accounts from towns across North Dakota where they're finding this stuff just in their city waste, truckers just dumping it wherever they can so they can avoid getting fined for having to ship it out of state. It makes you wonder who should pay for this stuff if the industry is going to these lengths to not. It's obviously, they're, they're making the cost-benefit calculation that it's better to just dump it legally than actually pay uh, for, for, what they, for what they're creating. Oh, that is absolutely true, Rachel. It's we have we have a great economy in North Dakota in many ways, and people are really thankful for that. But the costs are growing daily, and we're seeing those costs come out all the time. Dakota Resource Council members have been tracking and taking photos and sending them into the the state health department and to their newspapers and and for for over a year we've been talking with the, the North Dakota Health Department and showing them that this is happening we've been bringing their attention to these kind of of uh, illegal dumpings of radioactive waste uh, for over a year and we often get a deer in the headlights look from from the department uh, officials they're not sure how they can't track it. They don't know. And when the um, the municipal land uh, uh, waste dump facilities turn them away and fine them a thousand dollars a filter sock, um, the health department told us recently they don't know what happens to it after it leaves that dump. Wow. Well, I mean, we're what we have going happened. on in North we're Dakota. Because, sorry, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. What we have is that. Yeah, is that they are. Um, they have two two roles, and and the one role that trumps the other is promotion, promoting the oil industry, and the regulatory part of the state government's job has definitely taken a back seat. Don Morrison, the executive director of the Dakota Resource Council, uh, again a group of uh, North Dakota landowners uh, concerned about what's going on in their state. Thanks very much for being with us, Mr. Morrison. I appreciate it.